The next kind of questions I want to show you in type form, I'm calling them data questions. And really what it is, it's just email and web addresses. And depending on the version of Typeform that you have, it could include file uploads. Let me show you how this works. What I've got, I'm already in full screen, and I've got a template of the version I've been using before that has a welcome screen. We'll just click on that and see what it's like. It's the same that I've had before. I just changed the title that's down here. That's fine. I'll close that. And I asked for the person's first name. And then I'm going to ask for their email address. So I just come over to email and drag that right here. I'm actually going to paste in the text for this question. You could just say, you know, email. I'm going to make a couple of sentences here and I will replace this right here with the person's name that we get from the first question. So thanks and what's the best email address for you? And then they type in their answer. I could make this required depending on the situation that I'm in. And in fact, I think in this one, because often it's the only way to contact people or identify them uh, with a unique identifier, that might be appropriate in this situation. So you see it has a little asterisk next to it to indicate that it is required. The other kind of data question, again, using my very general term here, is a website. So I'll come over here to website and I'll drag that in as well. Just make sure it gets in the right place. And I'll just paste in the text for my question right here. See, do you have a website or a link to a social media profile that you would like to share? Some people have their own personal websites, I do, or you might have like a LinkedIn profile or a Facebook profile or something that you want to share. And you see, by the way, that the answer already has the HTTP colon slash slash, that's already in there. And that makes it a little clearer where the answer is supposed to go and a little easier to process the information. I don't think we're going to require that because not everybody has one and that's more than we usually need. I'll bet I'll hit save. Now, I'm intentionally using the free version of Typeform in this first course. And I'm doing that because I know that most people will use the free version. It allows you to get up to 100 responses per month. It allows you to ask any kind of question, pretty much. And it certainly allows you to take the time to get used to Typeform. And there's wonderful things there. There are the paid versions, which are Pro and Pro Plus, and one of the differences is that the paid versions allow you to do a file upload. Now, I'm just going to show you what happens if I try to do a file upload right here. I'm going to come over here, I'm going to drag it over, and it looks like everything's going to go, and then, ta-da, I get the little promo window here that says, well, this is a Pro feature, and they'll show you what it looks like. This is one of their live demos, and you can drag a file in there, and you can either upgrade or you can get a little trial version. In a subsequent course, I will show you all of the Pro and Pro Plus features. For right now, I wanted you simply to know that it exists. But I'm going to click out of this one. And you see it put it back over here, so I don't even have to worry about that. So really, I only have two kinds of questions that I'm asking here, emails and websites. And we can come over here to view my type form and see what the finished product looks like. It's going to be very short. And again, one of the things I really like about Typeform is the ability to get through the whole thing with the keyboard. So I just hit enter to start. What's my name? My name is Bart. And this one's required. You see the asterisk there on the end. Hit enter to go to the next one. What's the best email address? Now, I want to show you one of the nice things about both the email and the web address is that Typeform actually does some validation. If you enter something that's not right, it's going to let you know. So I'll put here, for instance, Bart space at space datalab.cc. And so that's not an email address because it doesn't have the at sign and it's got spaces in it. And you know, ta-da, when I hit OK to try to go to the next one, it says there's a problem here. So I can just back up and now when I hit OK, we go right ahead. And the same thing down here, if I put in this space and I put datalab.cc, again, it's going to say that that's not properly formatted. Now, 
it will let you do websites that don't exist and it'll let you do some things that, you know, in a strictest sense, it shouldn't. But it's a very simple and quick validation. Now I've got that one. And it goes ahead and we're done. And so those are two very common kinds of information, email addresses and websites, with the possibility of doing file uploads if you have the paid version, which I'll show in another course. But for right now, this gives you just another way of gathering information that may be very important in your own forms and that Timeform makes it quick and easy, does some validation work for you, and lets you go ahead and get the rest of the information you need.